Hi, this is Jared from Shunome, and um, today I want to talk about putting siding on a building. Uh, in a video I did two days ago, um, someone noticed that the little sample building I had had some um, lap siding on it, and they were curious how I did that. So I'm going to walk you through that process. Uh, the short answer is complex profiles. I as I've written about before, I use complex profiles for so many things. Um, this is a project I did early last year, and you can see the siding. That's complex uh, complex profile. Um, these uh, standing seam is actually also a complex profile. It's a it's a beam. Um, you'll notice here that the profile is is actually just a rectangle. Uh, but I still made it a complex profile. The reason for that is if at some point I needed to make that seem more intricate for whatever reason, I could just redefine the profile and everything set up. Um, this project was actually kind of unique that it had this um, thicker shingle than usual. It's, I think, a, I can't remember if it was a real wood or a fake wood shingle, but it's really thick. And this is um, actually also a complex profile. Um, that I then just wrapped around the house. It worked great. Um, as a, it's a wall. It heals really nicely. Uh, what else is complex profiles here? Uh, this gutter. Um, so much of this project is. But anyways, the um, the siding. You'll see there's lap siding everywhere. Here, what I do for a building is I model it with a regular composite wall and then wrap the building with a second layer. Um, which is the, the siding. So if I select this and then I'm hit the H key, which is my hotkey for hide layer, you're going to see basically a uh, plywood box. So, you know, I basically build it like you would a, a real building. I you know, make a plywood box and then come back and add the siding later uh, with my quick hop. I'm going to turn back on quick layers. They are on, they're just hidden. Um, I'll just go back to three. I'll turn it back on. So you can see I have actually the siding and then the stucco um, is also a complex profile again. Um, and again, this could be just a regular composite that's thin, but by doing it a complex profile, I'm just setting myself up for contingencies. So if we look at the uh, profile manager, uh, I got a. There's a lot of different options here. Let's look at um, standard lap siding. If we go and you see I've just modeled it. So we have uh, this is in 16. I'll jump to 17 and show you the changes there. But we have the lap siding that I've gone in and filled in. Um, the airspace behind it. If you don't fill in this airspace, or if you model this um, too accurately, you know, like if you do the actual shingle that says, say, looks like this, um, and then you model the next one down and say, do that, because they're not really touching or they're touching, but there's like little gaps. If you model it like that, you will destroy your model because you're going to get so many. Faces. So you want to abstract a little bit, uh, and also if you notice, if uh, we modeled it like this um, in elevation, what you'd see is you see, you know, all those lines. So instead, you want to again um, abstract it just a little bit so that the front and the back of the lap is. Um, Parallel, so you're only getting one line. So that's, you know, it's like that rather than that or that. Um, it's again, it's going to make your elevation look prettier um, and be a little less complex for a kind of chart. So, anyways, so you, that's the um, the profile. And um, one of the other things I like about this is here's a good example lap side in the courtyard. Um, this complex profile for the lap siding can span multiple stories. You know, 
you can in ArchiCAD, and especially in 17 now, it's more, it's even easier, more encouraged to have your your um, exterior walls you know, go top to bottom of the floor. But what's nice about the this left sided technique is it's ignoring everything that's behind the building, so you really get this smooth, perfect, um, continuous surface that you might not otherwise get because of um, you know, changes to the wall, say thickness behind it or, or whatever, it can ignore that. So you're really just skinning the building and making it beautiful. Um, a good example would be, say, here, you know, where you're able to get this slap side and just kind of fit perfectly around that. Um, it's been a while since I did this project, so I don't remember all the intricacies of it, but you can see um, I broke it here and then you're getting these things to wrap around. Um, Likewise, in in here, oh, this was this was a tricky one. Um, I needed the siding to go into this alcove, and to do it, uh, I took the main lap siding, put a empty opening in it, and then added a small piece there, and then these pieces there. So you can see, to wrap the corner, I've had to put in just a little little bit of wall there. Um, a little tricky, but kind of once you do it once, it makes total sense, and then you get, again, just beautiful edges and corners, and these uh, these drawings, the elevations just look amazing. Um, again, what's nice, if we look at this building, it's got this um, kind of flare at the bottom. This is all tackled with the um, with the complex profile there. Um, I'm going to now jump to an elevation, and hopefully this won't um, get too angry with me. Let's try the north elevation. Um, what I love about modeling, um, I go to a different one, south elevation. What I love about modeling the siding like this is the edges of the building um, are very crisp and clean, and I find you don't need to worry about going around with thick airlines because you have so much um, kind of relief and uh, detail at the edges that um, it's, it's when you print these drawings out, it's pretty clear and easy to read um, where the corners of the building are. Uh, one thing to note, whatever the, um, the horizontal lines for the setting are, it's going to be the same as the, the edges because it's all defined by the same same pen. Um, this here is another uh, the complex profile for the belt course. Um, let's see, this project doesn't have uh, much trim. But let me now jump to um, Archicad 17 and I'm going to show you kind of how to build it. As you're looking at this project, ask away of other questions you have about how I've done any of this stuff. I'd love to do some more um, videos talking about this project because there are um, a lot of pretty awesome modeling techniques in here. Let's see, let's jump over to 17. Okay, so here is the simple box. You saw this recently in some other um, videos. This is my my test box as I as I build my template. So. Um, to draw the, um, the lap siding again, you just kind of go and you model it um, however you want. Now, in 17, we're using building materials, so I've got the siding material, and I'm testing out airspace. Um, and all you're doing is setting the complex profile, or the wall to complex profile, choosing your complex profile, and then picking a uh, layer. I found that you want it on its own layer, so say exterior trim, and that the layer intersection group, you want it to be different. You don't want this to be um, interacting with any of your wall, you know, like your exterior wall layer, so I've put it to 10. Um, and then it's simply just um, just drawing it. So, um, you can see it's you know, going to heal with itself. 
you just make awesome formulas. I love that Archicad is just doing that for me. Um, now, the, the one tricky thing here for putting in windows, unfortunately, if we put in um, a window right now, there's no hole. You know, if we uh, hide that, you know, there's the window, but Archicad isn't going to cut a hole in there. So what you have to do um, is make an empty opening, put it in the wall, and uh, and line it up. Yeah. Fortunately, I just I droppered that around, but um, there's a there's a nice technique where say I select this window, I'm going to place this window in that siding wall. Um, so actually, now if we, we go and we look in 3D, there's you know, this thing, you know, this this window. So we have double window there, which we shouldn't have. So I can select that, go up to the info box, uh, click this little button here. It says element, uh, use as an empty hole. And we'll just turn that into a hole. And if we look, uh, that hole now lines up with the window beyond. Um, one thing to note when you're doing this, you then bring in, make sure you want to bring in the empty opening to cover up um, just to the window. You know, I, I don't want to see the, the airspace, the, um, wh what is that called? Um, yeah, this um, extra space. And I like using the real names and I can't think of it here. You know, the, the tolerance, I guess. So you want you want to bring it in so if you have uh, kind of shim space that it covers that. Um, so you can either use that, you know, copy the window into the other wall, turn it into empty opening, or just um, drag empty openings around and add it. It sounds a, a little bit of a pain, but once you've done it once or twice, adding those empty openings all across the building goes really fast. Um, when you resize a window, you have to then change the empty opening. That's a pain, but again, try it on a project, and you will never want to go back because it looks it's it makes beautiful um, drawings and beautiful models. Now, if you're adding trim to a window, you can add the trim to the window itself, or um, if you add um, you no. Know, beams and columns to create the trim around the window. That works great too. In 17, with um, building materials, if the trim you're using is on the same, um, is, has a higher priority than the siding, so my siding um, building material has an intersection priority of 311. If my, whatever, say wood trim had 320, if I draw wood trim, it will um, go, you know, take precedence over the siding and cut it out. Uh, you want to make sure then that the siding layer and the trim layer um, are either the same layer or just have the same intersection groups. So both have ten, so they interact properly. And um, what's great about that is instead of having to make this empty opening bigger or smaller for the trim, the trim just cuts out the the siding and it, it works. Beautifully. If you're not using 17, um, the same thing works. You just have to make sure you use columns and beams and then set that priority of the um, column. I don't even know if they still have it. Let's go back to 16. Um, you have to set uh, this beam priority higher than 7 so it takes over the balls. Um, but that is pretty much all I have. Let me. Uh, try and really quickly show you what I mean by the um, trim. So let's see. If we do that, uh, we'll see. You know, if, if you look, you can see that this is uh, being cut around the trim, so you can then move this trim um, around the window, and that's going to. Like, Trim it out really nicely and cut your siding and just make beautiful, beautiful drawings. Um, that's a really crude example, but as you can see from, from this guy, uh, 
it is just a great technique. Um, so I'm going to stop there. Please ask questions, and let's record some more videos. So thank you very much. Have a great day.